Think of the breath as medicine for the body and medicine for the mind. Because the way you breathe can have a huge impact on the other elements in the body. And it's a medicine that we overlook, but has a lot to offer to us. It's right there all the time, but it's simply a matter of learning how to pay attention, see what it can do for us. If you pay attention to the breath, you begin to notice that some ways of breathing are uncomfortable and others are more comfortable. Some give you energy and some take it away. When you've got a disease in the body, some, some kinds of breathing can actually aggravate the disease and other kinds can help it. So you want to look into this, experiment with the breathing so you have a sense of feeling at home here. And that the breath actually does soothe the body and it soothes the mind or it energizes the mind when the mind needs energy. The important principle here is that you don't just look at the breath as it is, because there's no way you can do that actually. There's always an, some intentional element in the breath. And you want to learn how to take advantage of that. So you change the breathing, watch and see how that goes. Change the breathing another way, see how that goes. And then you find a rhythm and texture of breathing that feels really good for you right now, then stick with it as long as it does feel good. If after a while it doesn't feel so good, then you can change. What's important is that you pay attention to what's going on in the breath. And that can give you a good place to stay. And then learn how to take that with you as you go. And no matter where you go, you've still got the breath inside and you can make it comfortable. That means that you can change your situation. Regardless of how things are outside, you can change the situation inside so you don't feel so weighed down by things. And it's in this way we develop not only concentration but also insight. Sometimes we think, well, there's concentration methods and then you drop that and then you do an insight method. But actually the insight comes from trying to keep the mind still, trying to keep the mind at ease in the present moment and developing your discernment to see how to do that really well. You gain insight into the things that pull you away, and you gain insight into the ways that the mind can be trained not to get pulled away. And that's the kind of insight that's really useful. We read about the insight in books. It has to be in constant stress, well, not self. They both, only if you think in those terms is, is it insight. Well, that's not true. Anything that helps put an end to the suffering and stress that you're placing on the mind. That's insight. Any understanding that comes as you learn how to get the mind more under your control, that's insight. Because that's the whole purpose of those perceptions of inconstant stressful, not self. It's so you can comprehend suffering and stress and you can abandon the cause. And whether you're thinking in those terms directly or not, as long as you're able to Notice where you're adding unnecessary stress and what you can do to put an end to that. Okay, that's that's what the insight is all about. So try to appreciate all the breath can do for you and all the fact that paying attention to the breath can do an awful lot, both for the body and for the mind. Both while you're sitting here and as you go through life, wherever you go. You've got a friend inside. You've got medicine inside. You've got food, clothing, shelter, everything right here in the breath, if you learn how to take advantage of it.